Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Uh, is a new installment of Revolutions, the ongoing diary of my spins. This week, prompted by a huge VCLT package from Dom seeking a thread. And when I mean huge, I mean enormous. Check out this beast. Dom had indicated that he wanted to send me a package and uh, I received a notification that a package was coming my way but I never expected something of that magnitude um, and so it was a joint effort when I opened the package obviously it was you know I think flabbergasted is the uh, is the correct adjective in, <laughs> in that case I was just so stunned um, the package contained gifts from several uh, of my favorite uh, VC YouTubers uh, so Dom put some records in there, um, as well as um, Chris Cole, uh, John Coltrane, 68, obviously. Uh, Sean, the Vinyl Dreamscape, um, Alex, um, Diamond Marimbas. Um, there was a gift from uh, Dave, the VC ambassador, who's in Charlotte, I think, and uh, from Stunty. Um, I don't know how that works because he's in Sweden all the others are in the US I don't know, I'll ask him but anyway um, it was a, just a really warm and lovely surprise to see that they've just put their minds together to make me a package with a beautiful note um, and so far I mean I haven't spun everything that they've sent me, obviously, because that arrived on, say, Tuesday, I think, and we are Sunday today. Um, but I, everything I've spun so far has been on point, has been just brilliant. So in this installment of Revolutions, I'm going to show you some of the records that they've sent me, as well as other records that I've played recently. Um, so, you know, you know the drill. So just then I was spinning this record, this wonderful record. This is a Chris Cole gift, one of the records he sent my way. Um, this is 20th Century Flute by Janet Millard. Um, I don't know if Janet Millard is still with us today, but she, the, her interpretations of um, Hector Villalobos, Robert Hughes, and especially uh, Bartok are very, very lovely. Um, I, again, I haven't had the time to spend a lot of time with this record, so I've only played it once, but Sunday morning, I always play classical music, and this just went down like a, you know, a, a real treat. And I think it will be visited again and again. Um, it's just beautiful, airy, um, very just classy um, touch on the on the instrument just beautiful uh, that is from 1978 just right now I'm playing this piece of avant-garde Australian uh, music avant-garde electronic music the Tempest uh, the Felix Verde volume 2 uh, which was recorded at the at Melbourne University. So Felix Verda was um, an well, a German uh, composer who migrated to Australia, lived here, and died here. And I found a few of his records recently in uh, in a thrift store. So just looked intriguing, and um, it's um, yeah. Just a, just a lovely record. You can hear it in the background. It's very abstract and at times a little bit jarring, uh, but um, just a nice nice little Sunday morning. And I thought I'm never going to get busted for this with YouTube. It was recorded in 1973 at Melbourne University on, um, on synth and uh, with a percussion ensemble. Here you go. Um, so now some jazz. Um, Dom knew that I was looking for this particular record, the Abdul Wadud reissue, by myself, solo cello. 
and it's hard to come by here in Australia. So he sent me a copy, he kindly sent me a copy as part of the package. Thank you, Dom, very, very, thank you very much because I was really looking forward to hearing this record and, and, and enjoying it. Um, this was recorded in 1977. It obviously is, as the title says, uh, solo cello. Um, this guy was part of the Black Unity Trio. Uh, they're from Cleveland, Ohio, and made this one amazing free jazz, avant-garde jazz record. And, you know, he's he's on it, on the cello. And I love these kinds of arrangements, like the in France, you get a Baroque uh, jazz trio, which is also, um, you know, con comprising of uh, Jean-Charles Capon, who plays the cello. I think it gives a jazz trio a real different flavor um this guy's now passed away and the original record the original of this is a four-figure record really easily any day of the week so um this is very very approachable if you are open-minded to free jazz it starts a little bit jarring but as you get into the record it sort of like unfolds like it just is really naturally beautiful music um, and I'm really glad to have this in my collection uh, thank you Dom um, and since I'm talking about jazz here is a record that was sent to me by um, Sean the uh, vinyl dreamscape uh, who lives in Detroit uh, a great South African uh, free jazz again um, we're in the realm of free jazz again uh, an amazing, amazing South African um, group, akin to a sort of uh, a, a, um, an art ensemble of Chicago, but um, but South African style. I mean, I think people are fairly familiar with the Blue Notes, for example, who, who also hail from South Africa. Um, this uh, here is an ensemble made of um, uh, piano sax, flute, vibes, congas, bass and drums. So you get this, you know, sort of very broad sound palette there. It's just, um, it's an excellent record and a record that I, I was fully aware of. Um, and I'm really glad you sent it my way, Sean. I really appreciate it's brilliant. Um, then still on jazz and this is a record that was sent to me by Dave uh, the vinyl ambassador um, look at this package look at this package it's absolutely gorgeous it's just beyond now a record is only as good as what's printed on its on the wax really like the the uh, the cover is the cover is a bonus but when the cover is as good as this you just think oh yeah it's probably quite interesting and this is just it's a, an amazing amazing record so these guys from what um, I can seem to understand are from uh, South Carolina uh, like um, like Dave um, this record was recorded at the um, Van Gelder studio in New Jersey and it comprises of two, this band is two people, Brent Backwell on tenor sax and Seth Nana on drums, so all you get is sax and drums and I love these kinds of interplay, it's like um, um, those, those free jazz records from the 70s with Rashid Ali and uh, and John Coltrane, like inter interstellar space, when there's this kind of interplay between just two instruments and there's no bass, which, I mean, the bass holds everything usually, but with these guys, it's, you just don't need. Kind of, kind of like a post-rock sound too, I think, you know, in parts. When you listen to this, it's it's very, I've, I've never heard of this band, but I love it and I, I, I'll be looking for some other of the records because They've got three other records I, I can see on Discogs. So Dave, thank you so much. It's an amazing, amazing record. Um, this is not a gift. This is one of my records uh, that I spun this week. Uh, Monette uh, Sudler, uh, Sextet, Brighter Days For You on Steeple Chase. 
Um, she was, she was or is, I don't know if she's still with us, I can't remember. I think she passed uh, fairly recently. Uh, right, um, so an American uh, free jazz, avant-garde jazz guitar player. Uh, and she appears notably on the uh, Khan Jamal uh, drum dance record, which is a really, you know, sort of very well regarded um, free or avant record, uh, which I have on, I have the reissue of. I know Stunty is a huge fan of that record. Um, and Khan Jamal actually appears on this, on Marimba. So I think with this, it's more like a, a free avant record um, with lovely moments like, you know, when, when Khan Jamal plays Marimba on this, um, because of how classy he is now, how refined his playing is, it just brings everything up. Um, but as a guitar player, she's very underrated. I think she's she should be much better known. Next, um, some Psyche-ish records, Psyche-proggy records, starting with this gift from Sean, again, the Vinyl Dreamscape, um, a record, a band I was blissfully unaware of, but not anymore. <laughs> Dr. Pete Larson and his cytotoxic Nia Titi band. Um, I think it's their first record. They're a, an Ann Arbor, Michigan uh, based band uh, with, uh, as Discog says, with Kenyan, with Kenyan influences. So it's psych rock, sort of leaning on the jazz side, but with um, African sort of percussion and the selection of melodies are, are some, somewhat African sounding. Um, this record is uh, called uh, <laughs> Mizigine. Well, I don't know if you're going to try. Uh, look up the band on Discogs and you'll 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 see what the the record is called. It's their first record. Now, what I love about this is everything. I will say the music is dynamite. This package is amazing. It's I think it's only like hundred made or something like that. It's hand pasted and glued. It's a record that's hand glued on another uh, a record cover. You can see there at the back that it's been glued over. Uh, it comes from a label called Dagoretti Records, if that helps you finding it. It's a very, very cool psyche with Afro influences record. It, it, this is going to get played a lot, I think, I feel. Um, this is a Chris Cole gift. Chris Cole sent this my way. Um, and this is a typical almost, um, you know, this is what Chris Cole I, I would expect him to, you know, to send my way something that is really super duper niche and rare from France, <laughs> you know. So um, this is recorded in Toulouse, France, 1981. Their demo existed only as a tape dub between collectors and musicians. As you can see, it's a relic of the French underground scene. Um, so this is a release one of the two releases on the label music research library there's only two releases the label is blank obviously there's nothing on it all you get is this piece of but it is a progressive rock you know to to make it very very simple to understand it's a french prog very obscure french prog uh, piece um with somewhat jazzy leanings um I've only played it the once, so I'm going to be perfectly honest. I need to immerse myself in it, but I played it. I really enjoyed it, and I really, it really struck me as being somewhat original and an interesting take on progressive progressive rock, especially something from France I didn't know. Um, so, Chris, <laughs> thanks so much. Sorry, I'm not doing it very, uh, uh, very much just justice, but I mean. I need more time to absorb those records, obviously. 
Um, this is a Stanti gift. Uh, Stanti sent me a couple of records, uh, and this was one of them, Wall Matthews. The Dance in Your Eye. I think it's his third record. And um, I was looking at the, at the credits on this, and from memory, there is David Darling. Yeah, that's right. David Darling plays cello. And for me, I mean, it's a, it's a big calling card because he's just basically my favorite cellist, just about David Darling. So classy, unbelievably underrated. Made some of my favorite ECM records. Um, his, uh, his album Cello, the, the one with the blue cover, is is an amazing if you've never heard that you know stop this video listen to it and what we've got here is to Will Matthews is a I would call him a psychedelic folk progressive folk type of artist he's not a folk artist per se in the traditional sense he, he just adds other interesting sort of layers to his music you know I love folk when he actually crosses boundaries and goes into other territories. This record is amazing though, it's just a beautiful, I mean, uh, I would expect Stunty to send me no less than something incredible. Um, so, Wal Matthews plays uh, the guitar, pianos, congas, sings percussion and record, and you've got a little bit of bass, uh, cello and viola there. And what you get in the end is a sort of mixture between Progressive folk, jazz fusion strikes me, and um, just, you know, folk jazz, like a sort of mixture of folk jazz in general, um, and it was recorded in Connecticut, and it just feels like a, a really cool artifact, you know, just being this original press from 1981, it's just a beautiful object, really, and sounds amazing and beautiful. Thank you, Stunt. Uh, I really appreciate. Now, since I'm talking about folk things, I played those two records uh, this week or the past week. Those two Jack Rose records, uh, Luck in the Valley. Uh, so Jack Rose is an American primitive guitar player who passed in 2009 or something or 2000 and like very early on. He was he was very young. And he put out a string of really amazing primitive guitar records. Um, he was clearly the uh, the heir, appa heir apparent of uh, John Fahey. Um, Luck in the Valley, uh, which came out in Drag City, I think. Oh no, Thrill Jockey, sorry. Uh, beautiful record, just amazing playing. Uh, very, very delicate, but also... Um, this one has got a, a, a sort of a bluegrass um, influence on the whole. Um, but, you know, primitive guitar is, is often influenced by either Appalachian guitar folk or bluegrass. It's in between. And this beautiful record, Apocalypse 10, uh, Rag Manifestos, which um, I think I like even better than Luck in the Valley. Uh, which came out also on, no, this is not a troll jockey. This is, um, no, this is, I don't know which label this is on, but never mind, you can look it up yourself. Um, yeah, just, just, the, they're both incredible uh, guitar records. Um, I'll continue with a record that I was, that I pulled out from my shelves. Uh, ambience now interesting records uh, this is a collection of Australian ambient and new age tracks this came out in 1987 uh, and uh, is the work of this radio DJ uh, Arnold Frollo's who worked on um, I can't remember ABC yeah ABC uh, radio on Sunday nights and um, he just compiled a bunch of tracks that sort of fit more or less in the ambient new age realm back then and uh, some bands that I've talked about lots of times like Nut Drowning, Waving, um, 
Gone Wonderland, which I've talked about, and Andrew um, Andrew Thomas Wilson, who um, I have a soundtrack by, but then other other artists that I'm not so familiar with, um, like John Elder, for example. But there's a track by Chris Abrams, the uh, piano um, man from uh, The Next, and a track from Steve Kilby from The Church, two tracks from Steve Kilby. Uh, beautiful compilation, uh, ambiance, ambience, ambiance, ambiance. <laughs> I don't know if I'm speaking French or English there. Uh, 1987. And since I'm on ambient music, here is a record that was sent to me by Alex. Uh, Diamond Marimbas. This is a band that I was, uh, an artist that I, I'm really familiar with, um, Michael William Gilbert, who hails from, I think, Connecticut or somewhere in the East Coast. Um, and I've got one of his records already, but this record here is um, a newer. Uh, it was recorded in, so he made most of his record in the like, late 70s, early 80s. We're talking about progressive electronic, new age, um, avant-garde electronic, um, in a sort of progressive way. He uses synth and sample pianos and sample voices. This one uh, came out in, I think, 2019. So it's a more recent, I don't know if it's a more recent, it's a more recent recording, I think. It's him being, well, he's, he's quite... It's quite elderly on the, on the picture there, so it's probably a recording from these it's two tracks. Amazing, ambient, lovely soundscapes, just atmospheric, uh, dreamlike tunes. I mean, the side two, Palim, Palimpsest, is it's amazing, beautiful stuff. So, Alex, thank you very much. I will treasure this. Um, um, here is a record that Dom sent my way, another record, he sent me the Abdul Wadud, but he sent me this as well, which I was looking for as well, I was on the lookout for. Um, John Sermon, uh, story, uh, the, the, the Amazing Adventures of Simon Simon. Um, so, I mean, John Sermon is a, a British, um, one of maybe the greatest British sax player ever, really, you could you could say that. Recorded most of his output on ECM. And this is a record that is kind of a must-have of ECM, in my humble opinion, uh, despite it's really sort of slightly off-putting. I mean, there's a sort of David Hockney quality to that picture, I think. Uh, if you're familiar with David Hockney, um, he always paints things that are hyper realistic and but kind of beautiful at the same time. And when you observe that shot, you just think, you know, this English countryside and there's something serene about it, which is reflected in the music. Um, this is a um, it's an ambient album through and through, but um, so. John Sermon plays sax, bass clarinet, and synth, and you have Jack Dijonet on drums, congas, and electric piano. So it's a two-man affair, uh, recorded in 1981, and it's really serene, it's very soothing, you know, peaceful atmosphere, really. It's, it's a just very, very chill out, beautiful record. And it inspired me to pull this record out. Uh, I played this too, uh, Private City. Again, in the same line, very, very much the um, same line as uh, The Amazing Adventure of Simon Simon. Um, maybe in a jazzier way. Maybe this is a bit jazzier than the other one. But I think um, equally, I mean, you could, you, those, two, those two records fit in the same box squarely. Uh, from 1988, also on ECM. And since I'm talking about ambient, new age, uh, I'm going to talk about Panra. I've spoken about Panra uh, in a more recent video. I'm showing the other, their other record. This is their first album, Music uh, from Atlantis, which is sort of a French version of... 
Ashra Temple and meets Papal Vu, meets um, Actuala, you know, the Italian um, frog folk band. That's what you get there. That's very much Papal Vu, Actuala kind of territory. Very, very much a, um, you know, an ethno folk, ambient folk, ambient, new agey, you know, master work very 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 cool record from 1978 i think they're french but they they released their records in germany i believe um here is a record sent to me by alex as well another alex record uh, which i knew nothing about when i received it but just the cover alone <laughs> this is lena platonos you can't see that there and um, the title means something with the, the, the circles. Um, I had it here on my, I, I made a note on my, uh, don't disturb my circles, that's right. I just made a note on Google Translate because I'm a moron. Now, I mean, you know, I don't read Greek. So, don't disturb my circles from 1990. So, as the cover indicates, is it is very much an art pop, ambient pop, crazy record from the early '90s, very much in that sort of Kate Bush, Virginia Astley school of thinking. Maybe Björk, you know, could fit in that sort of box. The songs are bouncy, jaunty, really like <laughs> it's it's. I just love this stuff. I love this stuff. It's you know. Yeah, like a great Kate Bush, just to simplify it. Um, she is, she's still alive. She's a Greek composer. She started um, on the piano and then went on to compose for a children TV show in Greece, uh, where she she made a name uh, and then released a string of, yeah, pop, ambient pop, avant-garde albums. Um, and on the notes that Alex left me, it says that he found it in uh, the WFMU fair last year. And apparently, this used to be Jim O'Rourke's copy, own copy, <laughs> which is really cool because I love Jim O'Rourke. Before he went to Japan, um, he, it was, his, it was his, his copy before he, he went to Japan. Amazing. Um, since I'm in the ethno category, um, Last week, because um, I take part in a, in a stream with Stanti and uh, and uh, French vinyl addicts every week, a, f a French stream, and they were talking about Rye last week, so it made me pull out this record, the uh, Rye Rebels on Earthwork, which is, I don't have much Rye in my collection, I have a few records. Now, Rye is Algerian pop from the, loosely from the late 70s, early 80s, or, um, to the mid, yeah, probably late 70s to the mid 80s is this the peak period of right probably early 90s too this compilation came out in i think in in that sort of 1988 which is like the the halcyon days of rye and what rye is is you know largely well it's arabic pop with um, synths often uh and the melodies are very much drawn from traditional melodies but but given a new lease of life through this kind of like pop lens and Khaled which you can see here is a superstar in France superstar and everybody knows where he is in France um, so he's probably he's on the cover because he's the most he's the he's the he's the masthead of of the movement but you've got Sheb uh, Sahawi there and you've got Sheb Hamid on this um, just a wonderful compilation. Rye, if you've never rye, uh, you, you know, something you could dig. Um, some indie records to finish off this. I, I'm currently working on the, uh, on, for my French channel on the shoegaze and dream pop video. And I, I just, uh, you know, happen to, uh, want to replay this because this is basically global communication the um ambient electronic band from the uh, from from england um playing r remixing a uh, an album by chapter house a um a shoegaze band 
Um, there we go. It's written there. Uh, retranslated from Blood Music by Chapter House. So, uh, Pentamerus Metamorphosis is a remix of a shoegaze record. It's amazing. This record is just, it's, it's dynamite. It's really, really good. Came out originally in 1998. Uh, very, very much recommend if you like um, ambient techno. It's ambient techno, but um, with a sort of, um, yeah, ethereal shoegazy kind of backdrop. Um, I replayed, I revisited the Tara uh, Clerking Trio, which is kind of like a mm, post rocky, trip uppy. Bristol neo classic. It's uh, it's uh, it came out last year uh, in 2020, maybe 23 or 24. I think it was from last year. They're a trio from Bristol. They play music which is yeah the crossover between trip hop, indie rock, and post rock. <laughs> if that just go and listen to it. I mean, I love her voice, Tara Cloak, and she is a very it's very 90s. This record is super 90s. It's like a throwback to the 90s big time. Um, this indie um, timepiece, uh, <laughs> The Wedding Present, uh, the album is called Bizarro. It's great, great. Again, indie rock, very much. Inspi I think they take the, their inspiration from the fall. The wedding present they sound like the fall sometimes it's it's uncanny but in a more sort of you know indie pop version of the fall the fall were never indie they were always kind of on the post-punk side of things very very cool record uh bizarro from 19 1989 or 1990 or something something along those lines um and I revisited Opal, which is um, a Paisley Underground classic. Um, so Opal is Kendra, Will, uh, Kendra Smith, who was in the Dream Syndicate, I think. Uh, one of my favorite bands as well from, from that period, uh, Neo Psychedelia. Uh, this is an absolute, absolute classic. If you like Mazzy Star and the Dream Syndicate and that kind of sound, even I'd push it to if you're a fan of Galaxy 500, this would actually fit in your um, in your box. It's on SST from 1987. I believe this to be an original pressing, um, which they're not easy to come by. And I do have a bunch of CDs that I've been playing. Um, I chose to uh, grab this on CD, you'll, you'll call me a heretic or something. This is the very latest um, album by Broadcast, the uh, the Birmingham, um, well, former band. Um, Trish obviously died years ago, and so they're releasing demos and collected demos from 2006 to 2000. Wonderful, wonderful collection of demos. Why did I pick up this on CD? Because the record I felt was going to be very cumbersome four side four or five or even six side I don't know I don't know whether I would have played it that much this is one CD you put it on it just you know I, I, I think it's got more of a chance of being heard in this household um, I just made a, a video on indie pop on my French channel and I was revisiting Electrolane wonderful record from 2004, I think, um, a girl band uh, who just, you know, remind me a lot of the Raincoats and the Slits and Wire. Um, beautiful. Um, this Tortoise box set, uh, Lazarus Taxon, which is a collection of uh, B-sides, demos, whatnot. It's Tortoise. I mean, I want to say very much more. Uh, since I'm on post rock, this wonderful Gastro Del Sol uh, CD I revisited, Crooked, Cracked, or Fly, um, which is the more abrasive, more post rock, experimental side. Um, 
wonderful, wonderful. Um, and this folky thing by Ben Chesney, 200 years it's called. So Ben Chesney is a, um, is a guitar player. He has a, an act called Six Organs of Admittance. But he has also this act called um, uh, 200 Years, and he plays with, um, what's the girl called? Um, Elisa Ambrogio is her name. She sings and he plays guitar. It's psychedelic folk, progressive folk. Yeah, beautiful. And oh, finally, this beautiful Julia Holter, one of my favorite ambient pop uh, singers, artists. Full stop. I love everything she's done. And I'll, this is Ecstasis. Ecstasis. Ex, Ecstasis. From 2012. And I could have got this on uh, on vinyl easily. But, you know, the CD was cheaper. That's all. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Hope uh, I haven't blabbed for too long. <laughs>